Good afternoon everyone, you're watching Campus France Live. Thanks a lot to be there with us. Today we're going to talk about higher education in France and to discover a new school, a new program, the MSc in Digital Marketing and Data Sciences at EM Lyon Business School to work as a digital marketing professional and to talk about the school and the program i'm very pleased to welcome my host of the day uh, first of all you clément levalois hello hi glad to meet you uh, you're the program director we're also with sava tunger hello sava hi thanks a lot uh, to be there your student ambassador of the program and we are with anna abreu hello anna Hi. Thanks a lot to visit with us. They're here to answer all the questions that you have about EM Lyon Business School and about the MSc uh, in Digital Marketing and Data Science. So don't hesitate to ask all of your questions. We're going to answer them on the live and on the chat section. We have uh, people from the school answering all of your questions. So feel free to ask them. Uh, before beginning uh, this uh, little interview, I'm uh, very pleased to show you a trailer to discover the school and to know more about the program. We will be back. Just after that. Learn here, accomplish now, through gatherings, discussions, and being enriched by others. Explore here, make now, through projects, experiences, and endeavors unveiling new paths. Evolve here, change now, through new perspectives, engagements, and actions that challenge the rules. Share here, reveal now, through learning, experimentation, and unlocking new vocations. Awaken here, create now, through inspiring generations driving progress in the world. Here and now, OM Lyon. That's a very good video to discover EM Lyon Business School. Clément, can you tell us more about uh, EM Lyon, the history of the school, and what we can learn down there? So EM Lyon Business School uh, is, was founded in 1872. So it's a, a top ranked business school in France and, and Europe. Um, it's going to soon uh, celebrate its uh, 100, 150th uh, birthday. Um, the school is generalist. It has um, a flagship program, which is the Grand Grand École, and also uh, a lot of uh, very interesting and uh, professionalizing master's degrees. One of them uh, being uh, the master's degree in digital marketing and data science. Um, it has several campuses, um, one in Lyon, obviously, uh, but also one in Paris, where the master's degree is uh, located. And what are the main goals of the MSc in digital marketing and, and data sciences? What do we learn then, there? Um, it's a very unique program. Um, with the simple goal to train um, uh, undergrads and graduates that join the program uh, to become marketing technologists. So what we uh, call a marketing technologist um, is a, a young professional which is um, able to be very much at ease uh, in contributing to a business environment. Um, all while uh, being able to uh, navigate the latest um, techniques and tools and thinking uh, in um, analytics and data science and artificial intelligence. So this is the unique um, contribution of the program, these two axes, digital marketing and data science into one uh, very qualitative program. And how long does it, uh, does it last? It's 18 months um, in, uh, in the following, from September of a given year to uh, June of the following year. And then um, a, a six months uh, period when the students uh, accomplish an internship, all while uh, writing up um, uh, an end of study uh, thesis. So mm. It's a very dense, very dense program. Uh, Anna, you're here with uh, Thanks a lot again. Uh, can you introduce yourself uh, in a few words? Tell us where you're from and why you decided to follow uh, this MSc. Hi, so um, I'm Brazilian. I've been in France for six years and after a bachelor in applied math, I was hesitant in pursuing further studies in a very technical field. 
or in a more business field. And um, I found a good balance in this program. So it allowed me to explore the business topics that I hadn't been exposed to previously. And it also allowed me to continue pursuing the technical side. So that's essentially why I chose the master's because it was one of the few that really offered a good balance between both domains. And in your case, Sava, can you introduce yourself uh, also and tell us why you decided to, to follow the MSc? Well, of course, first of all, hi. Uh, I've completed my bachelor's in engineering management in UK. And after completing my bachelor's, I realized that I knew how to run a project, but I had no idea on how to market that project. And after looking through every possible options in every different countries and every different programs, I realized that what Unleon offers uh, is not only about the digital marketing, but also about the data science. That's why I've decided to choose Unleon. Mm. Uh, it's important for you, uh, Clément, uh, to, to mix data science and digital marketing. Uh, you think that we can do digital marketing without uh, knowing how to deal with a large uh, data set, a large data set? Very good question. Uh, in, in my view, and I think it's not uh, controversial at all, it's obviously um, impossible to do uh, marketing and digital marketing today without having a grasp or even better, if, without knowing how to practice uh, data science. So data science, you can go uh, uh, full steam uh, and become a data engineer, um, but uh, not even going there. It's so important to have a, a data literacy, uh, being able to use dashboards uh, to uh, import and clean data. And, and the way we chose to integrate that in, in the training is to do it in, in a hands-on man, uh, manner. So yes, it's important, um, but what is really uh, key is to do it in a hands-on manner so that the students know about marketing and data science, not just through the slides and through a, a kind of second-hand report, uh, but through practice. Mm. Um, I just like to add that the, the, the two uh, ambassadors who are here with us today uh, come from an engineering or scientific background. I'd like to insist that uh, this is one of the two ways you can uh, join the program. We are, of course, very much uh, equipped and welcoming the students from a business background of, as mm -hmm. well. Sure. So we're going to talk about the program and we're going to talk about the different courses that uh, the student can follow. So what are the different classes? Uh, we imagine that we have both uh, math, uh, uh, computer science and also digital marketing, of course. Uh, what, are, what is the program concretely? Yeah, we have a lot. Uh, the students who are here today with us uh, know it. It's, uh, uh, the program is dense and, and full. We have made the choice to, um, well, to cover many things, but with the the uh, target of uh, bringing skills that are directly relevant in a professional uh, perspective. Mm. Um, so we are, compared to other programs, we are not that dense on math and stats. Uh, the reason is that today you can uh, practice data science and data analytics using many of the tools that actually package mm. all this underlying knowledge in a very uh, straightforward way. Mm. Um, so we do cover, uh, uh, in terms of management skills, we do cover digital marketing, obviously, um, program programmatic advertising, which is uh, the way you can automate uh, marketing campaigns, uh, web analytics, content strategy, well, and so on and so forth. Um, but so we never um, uh, lose the view that we, at the end of, uh, the studies when the students graduate, we really insist that they should have a strategic and managerial uh, capability for digital marketing. Mm. We are not trying to, uh, maybe compared to other programs, we are not trying to um, train our students in becoming very good at this or that tool, like uh, Google Analytics or these kind of things. They can certainly practice that outside of the degree. Uh, we prefer to give them um, a, a very good and long-lasting long -lasting background 
in management, covering mm. the fundamentals of digital marketing and in data science. Mm. For data science, uh, so I like to split it into business analytics, um, which is pretty old actually in terms of roots. So Excel is nothing new, right? Um, SQL or SQL is also uh, maybe uh, 40 years old, but uh, very much mainstream in the, in the companies. Um, dashboarding and data visualization. So all of that in the realm of uh, business analytics. And last, data science and artificial intelligence. So you see, it's pretty, pretty Dense. big. Yeah. And we start with the Python bootcamp. Okay. So Python is this programming language, which today I would say is really the, the le leading programming language uh, to manipulate uh, and handle data. Um, and this, uh, as we don't ask to the participants to know any programming language before joining the program. Okay. So we, we do provide these um, fundamentals from the start at the beginning of the program. And then we go on on data science, uh, machine learning, mm. uh, statistics with R and, uh, and many others as well. That's really interesting because <clears throat> nowadays in the data science uh, field, there is maybe two philosophies. The first one is to say uh, we need to form people that can uh, that can um, uh, program all the functions by themselves and who who have to understand everything and all the math behind that. So uh, you have a function to make uh, clusters uh, in the data visualization. You need to know everything theoretical about clusters. What you say is that that you want a more practical approach. You, you don't want your student to be able to develop everything that already exists. Absolutely. Um, all, um, I mean, there is no um, ranking of which approach is best. I suppose it really depends on the type of roles you want to play in a company. But we train uh, future graduates to understand the principles of clustering, for example. Um, or uh, which grammar uh, principles should be followed to construct um, a proper data visualization. But we don't ask them to dive into uh, the details of the cognitive and uh, neuro aspects of uh, visualization, uh, to take this example. Um, this allows us uh, to cover a large ground for the students. Um, there's also Speaking on the same topic, um, there is the opposite trend as well, which consists in saying that today um, all the tools are packaged in such a neat way that you, sh you might not even need to code anymore. Mm. And still we, we mm. teach how to code. So how do we position the master's degree in this regard? Um, we still think that it's, it's gonna help our graduates to interact with engineer, engineers and um, data scientists if they have uh, a knowledge of Python and the, you know, the fundamentals of data science in a hands-on perspective. Yet, we really understand that no code, the no code movement is thriving in the last few, few years. So we do integrate it as well in our program. This year, we opened an elective which is about RPA, uh, meaning Robotic Process Automation. And that's a no-code approach um, to the automation of business processes. Mm. So we are very much fine-tuning the content of the program as the scene evolves and it mm. keeps evolving. Um, Anna, can you describe uh, maybe uh, how you uh, live and how you, you learn with this uh, practical approach? Uh, do you have a lot of projects uh, in your classes? Do you have uh, like a lot of group uh, projects, homework? How, how does it work actually when you're a student at uh, uh, the uh, MSc? So we're really lucky to actually have in-person classes this semester. So this has been really great in getting to know each other. So all the classes are obviously um, uh, equipped with projectors. Um, so we can see the screen, like the screens, uh, most of them are interactive as well. Um, so that really helps whenever professors want to show us videos or whenever they want to have more interactive material. Um, they've also been really accommodating in the beginning for students who had issues getting visas, who had to come in a little bit later. 
So we could watch the classes um, via Zoom. So there's been a lot of accommodation to the actual context. What I really appreciate and what's been a big change for me is coming from a technical background. A lot of my work was individual. And at OM Lyon, since most of the projects are very practical and they really are training us to integrate a work environment, <coughs> a, lot of the, a lot of the work that we do are in groups. So that not only allows us to get to know our cohort better, which is great for us because it's an extremely international community. And so that allows us to really know what it's like to work in an international team, which personally I find extremely valuable. And um, it allows us to once again, for people who haven't had the opportunity to do this a lot throughout their education, it allows us to really know what it's like to work in a team and to really develop their um, collaboration skills. Can, can you describe what are the projects you had to, to follow, for instance? Uh, what did you do recently as a, as a project uh, for your class, one of the projects you had to do? Um, so one of the projects that we had to do last semester was to fully develop a product and develop a website for it. Um, that was uh, an interesting project to go through because we got to see the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript side, but also what it's like to kind of investigate um, a customer segment, customer profile, and kind of understanding the consumer behavior behind it. So that was great. And I'm personally loving a project we're working on right now, which is in machine learning. And we're actually starting to look at a data set and um, really understanding how um, machine learning can be applied to a business problem. And so we work in a group to first define the business problem and then um, through the courses that we've had in machine learning, understand the best model that could be applied to solve this business problem and then obviously present it later on. Uh, Sava, maybe uh, what do you particularly appreciate uh, in the program? Uh, what I like the most about the program is the fact that there are lots of students from different countries. Uh, if I recall correctly, there were more than 40 countries and we were like 120 students, more or less. The fact that we are all from different backgrounds, not just culturally, but also from engineering or management or business styles and getting together and working towards the same goal is what attracts me the most. It's what I appreciate the most in this course. Having an intercultural experience uh, here at, uh, at Paris. Uh, Clément, maybe, uh, can you describe what main professional skills uh, you want to deliver to your students at the end of, uh, of the program? Yeah, that's the most important uh, for us. Uh, so I don't neglect, of course, the international diversity and uh, the enrichment that our students get from uh, joining such an international cohort. But spe speaking of prof professional skills, um, we have one uh, very short expression to uh, summarize it. We try to train marketing technologists. So this kind of hybrid profile um, that is able to join um, a business team, um, understanding the customer point of view or just the operations uh, point of view, all while uh, interfacing um, easily uh, with, the, with the data science uh, side. So if, if, I, if I need to translate that into uh, uh, official uh, uh, job positions, um, many, many of our students um, end up uh, joining uh, companies as data analysts, data consultants, um, marketing analysts, um, uh, data scientists for the most uh, inclined, inclined for the uh, for the technical side. Um, um, customer success managers, uh, that's an important role um, um, when you help customers basically use your products and you are typically interfacing between the customer and you know the back office where all the, the product and the, the data complexity lays. So you are at the bridge between these different worlds and our students are very much equipped um, to do that. Um, and these skills, they, they, they are able to apply them um, in a variety of industries. I, I love to share on, on LinkedIn uh, the, you know, the wall of logos of the companies that our students join for an internship. And this wall of logos is really diverse. At the center of it, we have 
um, the companies from the new economy, so the, the marketing analytics uh, platforms. Uh, well, I won't name them, but uh, um, many of those uh, became uh, uh, licorns in the last few years. But around this core, which is obviously uh, uh, an outlet for our students, um, you have uh, uh, luxury brands, so many, many uh, companies from um, cosmetics and luxury and, and uh, wellness. Um, they need basically to uh, beef up their marketing uh, with analytics and they, they need the profiles of our students. And banks and consulting groups and uh, the industry at large and also the big names of e-commerce. Um, Amazon is one of the top recruiters for our students. If you're joining us, thanks a lot to be there with us uh, for this afternoon. Uh, you're watching Campus France Live and we are talking about the MSc in Digital Marketing and Data Science at EM Lyon Business School. Uh, we're now going to talk about uh, a very important question if you're watching us and if you have followed the different uh, uh, questions and the different answers that we have. Uh, now we are going to talk about admission, how to join the, the program. Uh, we're going to answer a few questions here um, in the live, but we're also going to answer some of them uh, on the chat section thanks to Marie uh, working at uh, Lyon Business School so don't hesitate if you're watching an online watch, watching us on live or on replay uh, to look at the chat section because we, you will have some answers regarding the admission process um, my first question is for you Clément and it's really easy uh, with a program mixing data science and marketing what background do you require do you want scientists or do you want a, a marketing specialist we want uh, uh, we want applicants, young or not. We have many uh, applicants and uh, participants who are uh, in their thirties as well. We want candidates uh, who have a rich and uh, full um, life experience. Uh, this means that, of course, we are we are very attentive to the quality of the uh, academic background. Uh, but what counts is uh, the maturity of the candidate and the diversity of their experience that proves their commitment and the clarity of their career goals. Mm. Um, so a background in math can help, but so uh, does uh, a very strong background in management, uh, but even in arts or architecture or medicine. Okay, <laughs> so there is uh, plenty of ways to, to, to come. Yes, because Again, we are very much geared to the job market. You know, what do you do after graduating from our program? And what we learn and what we believe is that companies uh, are not looking for uh, thousands and thousands of students who would be all the same in having followed exactly the same trajectory in terms of education and, uh, you know, just what they did in their uh, younger years. We believe that um, companies will find a match with students who show a diversity of uh, life trajectories. Mm. Uh, so we insist a lot in the application phase on the uh, on international profiles, on um, personal projects. So if you have an account on GitHub or one of these uh, websites where you can showcase your uh, coding portfolio. That's a big plus for us. Mm. But that's not necessary because you said earlier that you don't need to know how to code to join the program. Exactly, exactly. Um, so it can, again, we are very much interested in, in applicants that can showcase their maturity, I can't find a better word, uh, in diverse ways. Mm. Um, in the chat section, Marie is going to answer the following question, the different steps to apply to one of the programs and the calendar of applications. So look at the chat section. And if you have more questions about admission and the, about the process, don't hesitate to ask her on the chat section, even if it's uh, on replay, because the team is looking very uh, precisely to your questions. Uh, but maybe, uh, Anna, you can describe a little bit how your application process went. Can you describe the different steps you followed and how it went for you? Yes. Uh, so if I remember correctly, I initially applied on the platform um, and then I got an invitation to take an online test, which included three parts. 
um, there was a logic part, uh, a part where we had to describe our motivation. So it was orally and then a written part as well. And there was a behavioral assessment as well. What I particularly appreciated from the from this process was the fact that they didn't require us to take the TOEFL or the GMAT, which for some students, I know it is a significant cost. Um, and uh, so this we were evaluated according to the school's requirements in um, their, their logic requirements, essentially. I found that really interesting because I personally did take the GMAT and did take the TOEFL while applying to other schools, but I genuinely felt like my level of um, logic and capacity to act out in a situation was significantly better evaluated in this process compared to some other schools where I only took a GMAT, it was very general. Um, I felt like I couldn't completely express myself. And although there was a cover letter attached, I felt like with this process, we really got to show our skills and it felt more targeted as well because we knew what the school was looking for. And to me, it showed what they were expecting from me and what their values were. You, you want people who know uh, why they're in the program, who knows what they're going to do. Uh, you don't want people that just want uh, another master or that doesn't want uh, only uh, to have a little mention on their, uh, on their profile. Absolutely. So I like to insist on, well, as Anna said, we have a, a number of formal processes to, to assess that. Um, uh, the CVs as well, of course, the recommendation letters. Uh, we also have video questions, uh, three of them in the case of our program. And I like to insist that for us, the, uh, the professors who evaluate the, the applications, that's also a key way to assess the fluency in English. So I didn't mention that, but that's, um, that's non-negotiable. We, we do not admit uh, students who are not fluent enough in English because that would compromise their uh, working groups with the rest of the cohort. Um, so you have to be fluent in English. And second, the, the videos help us gauge, uh, gauge the motivation mm. of, the, of the students. And it's very easy for us to, uh, uh, to differentiate students who are genuinely motivated and engaged versus uh, students who, as you say, are just trying to, to find a master's degree to, uh, to tick a box, basically. Mm. Um, maybe, um, Sava, what, what would be your advice for the people following us today and wanting to, uh, to, to join the program? Uh, Sava, what, what would you recommend them to do uh, in the application process? First of all, uh, as Mr. Clinton said, they have to be quite sure on what they want to do. Uh, this is another program where you can join and hope to see how it goes. If you are really interested in digital marketing as well as the data science, then this is exactly the program for you. But as again, Mr. Clement said, if you want to just add something else on your CV to show that, oh yeah, okay, I've done this master, then yeah, you one, are not going to uh, get accepted to this program and two, you're not going to enjoy what you are doing. So basically, in, in general, what I can say is they have to be uh, keen, they have to be interested in digital marketing, they have to be hardworking people, and they have to be open on working with groups. If they are, uh, if they can't work in group projects, I don't think that this is a great uh, program for them. Question regarding the admission process, don't hesitate to ask them on the chat section. We're not going to talk about the student life. Uh, maybe I'm beginning with you, Anna. Can you describe how it is to be a student at EM Lyon Business School on the Parisian campus, located, I think, near Gare de Lyon? Yeah, that's right. Um, so we're really lucky to be more or less in the center of Paris. So that's really, really nice. Whenever we want to go out or do activities, it's really easy to get anywhere and to do anything that we want just because everything is so close. So that's really, really nice. And honestly, I think it'd be hard to find a single student who's upset with their student life at Réunion because although we do have a significant workload, I think 
we do have periods where we can really take a little bit of a breather and enjoy getting to know people. And what I personally enjoyed the most is the fact that we do have an extremely international cohort. And I think we all learn a lot from it. So we've had picnics, we've had um, a lot of uh, things where we can kind of all bring um, bring ideas or bring food or bring culture from other backgrounds. So like now it's the Chinese New Year and a lot of the students that are not Chinese are also getting together to celebrate it because we're learning to celebrate different cultures. And to me, like that's extremely valuable. And regarding the accommodation, uh, was it easy for you to find an accommodation um, in Paris? So that is the one point that I would really stress on. If you do plan on coming to Paris, please look for your accommodation early on because it is a little bit difficult to find. So I enjoyed, I've been in Paris for, for six years. So the fact that I do speak French definitely helped. But a lot of the non-French speaking students were still able to get accommodation through student housing. There are really a number of options that you can look into. But if you could get help from a French person in case you're looking for shared housing, that would really help. But definitely start looking into it as soon as you have your admission. So if you're coming to look into September, June is the latest you should be looking for accommodation. Um, as, uh, as we just say, Clément, Clément uh, in the program, there is um, a huge multiculturality with a lot of people with different nationalities and you are in a multicultural uh, state, uh, city, Paris. Uh, the idea is that after this um, 18 months of, uh, of program, they can work in all over the world. Yeah, we basically we try to um, we try to be helpful to a uh, to the variety of the students who join us. Um, I, we don't have systematic surveys about the intent after graduation, but what we can observe is, is that a majority of them is looking for an employment in an international company located in France or Europe. Uh, you have um, well, a sizable minority of students who want to immediately go back to their home country But I would say that most of them are looking even like straight in uh, Ile-de-France or, or Paris. Um, so it definitely helps them to be uh, yeah, in, in, a, in a group where everybody uh, has um, different uh, networks, experiences. Um, but it's pretty, uh, pretty varied in terms of, of expectations. Mm. Uh, maybe, um, Sava, you, you can tell us um, if you had some fear before joining the school, because sometimes we are, we are joining a new school, a new country, a new culture that can be a little bit uh, frightening. So how was it for you? Did you have uh, some fear before joining <coughs> the new business school and how did you overcome them? Uh, in all fairness, I don't think that I am the best candidate to ask this question to because even before coming to France, I've already studied in France three years prior to my studies in UK. So I knew the culture and actually French is my second language thanks to my uh, high school. So I didn't have any problem adjusting to the culture and I'm quite used to it. But when it comes to the courses, I was quite afraid of the coding part, especially after reading what uh, digital marketing and data science offers in terms of data science part. There was Excel, SQL, uh, Python, HTML, JavaScript, etc. I was quite afraid of those parts and I didn't think that I was going to be able to do it. However, with the lecturers and especially what uh, Emilion Uh, proposals, which is a premium account in Data Camp, it quite helped me to improve myself, to understand the lectures better, and to overcome my fears, basically. We're now going to talk about the professional world because the idea with uh, MSc is to find a job or at least to find opportunities after uh, graduating. Uh, first of all, Clément, how does it work for the internship? Uh, is it possible to do internship during the program? And how do you help students to find an internship if they have to do one? Sure, they do have to do, to do one. So the master's degree 
is uh, governed by the regulations of Conférence des Grandes Écoles, uh, which gathers the, uh, the top schools in engineering and, and business schools in, in France. And according to these regulations, the students of the master's degree have to complete a, a four to six months uh, internship um, after their, I mean, as the last part of their studies. Um, they can also find a job directly, a temp job or permanent job, and I, uh, fi or find a, a VIE, VIE, and or a local contract if it's, uh, if it's not in France. So just to insist that internships is the most common option, but you have other options as well. So how does it work? Um, pretty easily, actually. Um, I'm not saying it's not stressful to the students. I'm looking at Anna and Sava because uh, uh, they know the, the drill. It's uh, finding an internship is always uh, well, stressing. You, you, you always uh, want to find one as soon as possible to, to secure it. But uh, with Insight, because I, I manage this program for uh, several years now, I must say that, um, again, we are a, a unique program in terms of positioning. We are a unique program in Europe and maybe beyond that trains our students in digital marketing and hands-on data analytics and data science. The result of that is that when you want to find an internship, the companies are just jumping on you. Because, I mean, again, uh, from the press, from the headlines, uh, especially in this uh, COVID or post-COVID times, the digitalization of the companies that need to have an online presence to mm. survive uh, means that the job market for our students is extremely favorable. Mm. So it doesn't, they still have to look for an internship and, and, and be very, very serious about it, but they do find internships uh, easily. All the more that, uh, maybe that was a follow-up question, but all the more that uh, we have carriage services mm. to, to, uh, to train them, uh, to coach them, uh, to guide them for their CVs, their LinkedIn profile, and, and I could continue if, if you have a, a question on that, because that's a big part of what mm. we provide as well. But maybe what is really interesting and what the, the people following us uh, today have to understand is that the, you, you, you form people that can totally understand all the question, marketing, uh, how to conduct a different campaign, etc., etc. But they, the difference with all other people working in marketing is that they can analyze all the results and they can understand uh, because or, or nowadays when you do, when you conduct a, a marketing campaign, it will be on thousand or, or, or hundred of thousand people. But they, it's, not a, it's not only numbers for them. It's a really key to analyze uh, how to work and how to conduct the, the marketing. Absolutely. So our students, when they join a marketing team, they don't have to, to give a call to the IT person or the business analyst asking for a query to be made to retrieve the data set that they're going to analyze. They can do it by themselves. And it's not because they are wizards. It's because these are the new expectations from the companies. The companies, many of them joining the, I mean, being digital natives, Data is part of their culture, and they expect now that the marketing department will behave the same with the same data literacy. The problem for these companies is that not many uh, programs do provide this almost this double degree, I would say, where you have this business acumen, all while being agile at um, you know these things from SQL and databases and, and Tableau and the rest. Um, so. So again, our students can be quite, are in very good conditions when they look for an internship. Again, uh, they still have to, uh, to do their, their, their studies very seriously and then do this job search seriously, but mm. the conditions are pretty favorable. Uh, Anna, how does it work for you? You're looking uh, for an internship. Uh, uh, do you have uh, some interviews? How do you look for, for it? Uh, do you already have uh, offers? How is it for you? Um, so if I can only say one thing about this job search is LinkedIn, just be extremely active on LinkedIn and you will really make the best out of this program. So we're still in January and I know a couple of my peers already have their internships. I have been fortunate to not have applied for a single internship yet, and yet I'm in four interview processes. 
So really, I've just had recruiters reaching out not only for internships, but also for full time positions because I am active on LinkedIn and because the MDU uh, number two in employability in France, I honestly did not expect it to be as important as it is proving to be right now. So I know I'm also not an exception in this area. I know a number of students have been receiving internship offers for July, even though we're still in January and usually the internship start, uh, search, it generally starts around March, April. And um, a number of us are already being contacted by recruiters and headhunters. So I think we're in an extremely fortunate position. Ah, is it the same uh, feedback uh, from uh, your side? Ça va? Yes, um, uh, how yeah. for you? Yeah, sorry, I couldn't hear that. That was a problem with the connection. Uh, yeah, I totally agree with Anna. And the LinkedIn is one of the most important tools for us to find an internship. Uh, for example, uh, we had this career forum in Akuyu campus a couple of weeks ago, which uh, digital marketing and data science draw us to. Uh, I wasn't expecting to find any internships, but I was planning on starting or making connections through LinkedIn, which I managed to do. I added people from Ubisoft, L'Oreal, Volvo, Adev, and I managed, I got to talk to different people about different uh, positions. So yeah, in overall, LinkedIn is quite important in terms of finding an internship. Tools than uh, LinkedIn, thanks. Uh, you just uh, talk about that to the career services. You already told us a few words about it, but what can we concretely have in the career ser services uh, when we are a student at uh, Lyon? So um, I don't know to what extent it's really o original. I didn't benchmark uh, with other business schools, but uh, it's pretty outstanding. It provides the students with everything they need to be in good shape uh, for their job search, because even if you have one, well, that's a, a classic, but if you have an excellent content, it's not enough. It has to be uh, uh, really neatly uh, uh, packaged and easy to read by the recruiters. So the students are, um, well, they have uh, group sessions and individual coaching sessions on um, all the aspects of the, the, the job search. Maybe Anna and, and Sava could be more specific specific on that. I, I don't attend these sessions myself. We have a dedicated service for it. And we have, so that's kind of the, yeah, that's in their schedules in the first and second and third semester. Um, but on top of that, they have um, uh, events organized by, by the school uh, at large. So the Carry Forum is the, is the biggest e event that was organized uh, earlier this month. Uh, with uh, dozens of uh, very large companies uh, meeting the students. We have also what we call vocation, uh, vocation days um, that are focused on this or that industry. And on top of that, we have the, the events um, organized by the master's degree uh, ourselves. So what we do is uh, many things, but uh, the, the one I'm gonna mention and that I like the most is the DMDS, so the acronym for our master's degree, digital marketing and data science, DMDS um, alumni coffee. Because we are a young program, we are uh, four years young, I think, uh, but we do have alumni uh, already, of course. Uh, so we invite alumni, our wonderful al alumni, to go and, and, and share their, tes their testimony about their, how did they find an internship and how they moved on to, to their jobs in an informal in informal chats with our students. Uh, so it feels good to see, you know, where can you go after the master's degree? And it's really helpful for the students in terms of projecting themselves, right? Because it's all good to be, I mean, again, all our candidates or participants, they have a rich life before mm. joining the master's degree. We select them on, on, on their amazing profiles. And then they learn digital marketing and then they learn data science. So it, it might be a bit hard for them to, you know, how to tell this narrative mm. to a, 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 a recruiter. And our alumni help them show them the way, like this is how I, 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 I manage this complexity, this wealth of experience. That's how I 
I got the the, the job I, I I wanted. So the we have that personal branding, like how to, yes. to to tell and to 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 to, to tell the little story uh, behind the, which what storytelling you did. is 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 effective and and um, so we have that and it's really it feels good because mm. it's like peer peer to peer, right? And what are the different job opportunities for the students after the program? What can they do? Lots of things. Yes. Um, so I mentioned that everything that is marketing and data analytics related are the, the, the biggest match uh, in a variety of industry from the most traditional, so to speak, to the, to, to the latest economy. But maybe I like to insist on the fact that, uh, yes, you also can become a data scientist or data engineer with this master's degree. It all depends on your personal trajectory. So we, we don't close doors or at all. Um, it depends on the opportunities you, you go for. And we do have a couple of students, including one I'm thinking of now who comes from hospitality. So he, 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 he was working in hotels and the management of hotels. And, it, and he has become a data scientist in, in one of the big uh, international automotive group. So anyway, if we have these candidates and these participants following these trajectories, we support them. We mm -hmm. are uh, giving them feedback about their opportunities um, and providing as much advice uh, as we can. And for the salaries, we imagine that uh, in this field, it's pretty good. Yes, I, I, it's always a tricky issue because mm. uh, I, but the, the f I like to, to give figures uh, again, because we we are pretty confident uh, about them, uh, but I would say we are in line with the general uh, uh, salaries that uh, graduates of EM Young uh, enjoy. So around 45k uh, uh, annual salary, uh, and I, li I I think that it's now a minimum. I would say mm. it depends on personal circumstances. Where uh, you work, in which kind of companies, in which country, but small or big size, mm. is, is it a startup, etc., uh, etc. Et uh, is it a senior role, uh, given your past experience or not? But the job market today is so tense, given mm. the shortage of uh, analytical skills, that uh, my message to the to the graduates or the near graduates is to say that. They, they can really have uh, um, salary expectations uh, that are upward of uh, what was the case a couple of years ago. Mm. And to conclude, Clément, what would be your advice for the student watching us today who plan to come to France to study at um, Lyon? What would you like to, to tell them? You can uh, watch your little camera to address directly to the audience we have today. Well, I can't wait to uh, review your applications uh, because if you do apply to this master's degree, uh, it's because you have a, a strong motivation. Uh, you know that you want to make a big jump uh, in your training and in your professional perspectives. We do appreciate that. So please don't censor yourself thinking that uh, uh, you might not be a good fit or that you are you are lacking this or that um, aspect of uh, this or that diploma. What counts is, again, uh, your maturity and the fact that you had um, a bunch of life experiences, professional, academic, personal, that you can share and bring to your application. If you do that, we, we're going to be very much interested in your application, and then we're going to help you make this wonderful transition and become marketing technologists. That's our promise. Thanks a lot, Clément, Sava, and Hannah for having been uh, with us today and for having uh, uh, present uh, this really interesting program, MSc in Digital Marketing and Data Science at um, Lyon Business School. And uh, I will uh, uh, remember what uh, Anna said about LinkedIn and about all the opportunities she can have without applying. That's really interesting. And I think that uh, it has made uh, um, think a lot uh, the, the, the viewers today uh, to, to know that you can have a uh, such opportunities with this program. Thanks a lot again. Thank you very much. And thanks to you for having uh, watched us. If you still have questions, don't hesitate to ask them directly on the chat section. The school is here to answer all of your questions and don't hesitate to visit the website of EM Lyon Business School. See you soon on Campus France Live.